Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely T T V show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely T T V show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey everyone, I hope you guys are doing good today. Welcome back to my channel. So today I have another mysterious story for you guys surrounding more drama in the digital money world. And this time it's involving Cash App and the tragic death of Bob Lee. If you haven't yet, please make sure you subscribe. Hit that subscribe button down below so that way you never miss an update. So anyhow, let's go ahead and dive into this story. So let me give you a little bit of a background on who Bob Lee was. Bob Lee is a regular guy. He was known for his love of technology, and he was also an early adapter in many apps that we use today. But one of the most popular apps that we all have used and have access to is Cash App. It's a mobile payment service that allows you to send and receive money instantly without any bank involvement, okay? So tragically, Bob Lee passed away under some very mysterious circumstances yesterday. And while the exact details surrounding his death still remain unclear, this story has sparked a lot of questions and conspiracy theories. So I want you guys to go ahead and watch this news clip and I'm gonna come back with the rest of my commentary. The deadly stabbing of a leader in the tech world. Even Elon Musk takes aim at San Francisco's safety. But tonight we dig through the data. How does the narrative stack up to the numbers? Good evening, I'm Ama Dates. And I'm Dan Ashley. Thank you for joining us. Uh, now 48 hours after the deadly stabbing of well-known Silicon Valley executive Bob Lee, and the search is on for who might be responsible. Lee had been working for a cryptocurrency company called MobileCoin, but those who knew him say his innovations in tech won't be forgotten. ABC 7 News reporter J.R. Stone is tracking new details tonight and hearing from those who knew him well. He's in the newsroom. J.R.? Dan, Ama, so many of those I spoke with said the sad part of this is not just what Bob Lee had done and the family he left behind, but the innovative things he was still working on, the things that would have helped people going forward. A candle lit in memory of 43-year-old Bob Lee, a tech executive and father of two girls who was killed in a San Francisco stabbing. I'm just, you know, overwhelmed. His dedication to his kids was first and foremost. It's just almost numbing. I, I think everybody close to Bob is just in shock because there was no one who I don't think didn't love Bob. Doug Dalton had dinner with Lee last Saturday, saying Lee had relocated to Miami, but was back in town involved in a business summit with the company he worked for called MobileCoin. Dalton says Lee's spirits were high. He literally did not seem to have a care in the world. He was very excited about kind of where things were going with mobile coin. He was very excited to be back in the Bay for a bit. Then, days later, at 2.35 a.m. Tuesday, police say Lee dialed 911, telling dispatch he had been stabbed but not giving them a location. SF Standard reporter Jonah Owen Lamb watched the surveillance video and described seeing what appeared to be Lee struggling in the Rincon Hill neighborhood. And then at Harrison, he seems to lift his shirt up as he approaches a car that is stopped in the corner with its flashers on. The car then drives away. He falls to the ground. He gets up again and then walks back on Main the way he came, but on the other side of the street and, and falls down. Those living in the area where Lee was found said they witnessed a heartbreaking scene. It looked, it looked vicious. I took her out at 11 o'clock yesterday morning and I saw the blood smeared on, on right, right around here uh, on the building. Dalton still saddened and confused, not knowing what happened. Even if somebody were trying to rob him or something of that nature, Bob is one of those people who he would not have tried to fight them or anything of that like that he values his children too much and so i couldn't imagine anything like that sources told our abc7 news i team that a kitchen knife with a four inch blade was found in a caltrans parking lot across the street was that the weapon used here that is unknown right now 
J.R. Stone, ABC 7 News. All right, so you guys just saw that video. Now, one of the most intriguing aspects of this story is a possible connection to Bob Lee's death and him being the inventor of Cash App. Now, some people have speculated that his involvement with Cash App made him a target by criminals or hackers, while other people are suggesting government involvement, okay? Some users on social media are even saying that he was filing a lawsuit against the federal government due to them ushering in FedNow and getting rid of all other payment methods. Now, I have searched for this lawsuit, and I personally haven't found anything concrete yet on this theory, but that is what folks are saying on the internet. Authorities are still currently investigating Bob Lee's death and trying to uncover the truth behind the mysterious circumstances. As of now, there's no link that his death was because he was the cash app owner. However, it is a reminder of all these potential risks with being an owner or an inventor of these digital payment platforms. So while I'm talking about Bob Lee, I want to also do a quick deep dive into the dark side of crypto. Now, you guys remember we talked about this a few months ago on the podcast, me and Lady J, about all the mysterious deaths concerning the crypto kings. Everything from missing millions to mysterious death, it has caused a lot of conspiracies on the internet. So I want to break this down really quick. So one of the stories that went viral um, back in 2018 was the story of Gerald Cotton. And he's the founder of the Canadian cryptocurrency exchange called Quadera CX. And in 2018, Cotton unexpectedly died while on a trip in India. Now, this is the twist. He was the only person who knew the private keys to access the company's funds. And the company was worth over 190 million dollars. Many conspiracy theories have arisen that possibly Cotton faked his own death and basically ran off with the money and now he's living in some private island, honey, maybe in Cuba with Tupac. But that's been the conspiracy surrounding Gerald because nobody till this day has been able to access that $190 million. Either I know a guy who screwed up and lost a quarter billion, or I know a guy who pulled off one of the greatest crimes in history. Next, we have the case of Pavel Lenner, and he was a prominent blockchain expert who was kidnapped in the Ukraine, honey, in 2017. He was released a few days later, and it's believed that a $1 million ransom was paid in Bitcoin. The details surrounding his kidnapping have remained unclear And the case is still unsolved, okay? And then we also have another crypto king. His name was Matthew Mellon. He was a billionaire banking heir who invested heavily in cryptocurrency. Now, Mellon also died in 2018 in a Mexican rehab facility with his cause of death being alleged drug overdose. And a lot of people are saying, well, if he's in rehab, how did he have access to drugs to overdose? That doesn't make sense. Now, another thing that's really crazy about Matthew's story is that his family is unable to access his crypto fortune. And his fortune was estimated at five hundred million dollars he had his keys hidden as well so this is the second crypto king to have these private keys that nobody else can access but a lot of people feel like you know the governments were able to crack it and access it and potentially take the money so now the latest crypto king who ended up dying now he died in 2022 and it was his death that made us do the podcast so if you guys remember um his name was Nikolai Mushigan and he was 29 years old and he died on October 28th of 2022. Now, what was so crazy about his death is that he died hours after tweeting that he feared that the CIA and Mossad were coming after him. So let me go ahead and read to you guys this tweet that he posted. He says, CIA and Mossad and the pedo elites are running some kind of sex trafficking entrapment blackmail ring out of Puerto Rico in the Caribbean islands. They're going to frame me with a laptop planted by my ex-girlfriend who was a spy. They will torture me to death. So he posted that at 4.57 a.m. on October 28th, 2022. And literally a few hours later, he was dead. He was found in the water by a surfer in Puerto Rico. And the only thing on him was his wallet. He was fully clothed. Um, They found him the next day on October 29th. And he had a wallet in his pocket. So a lot of people, you know, there was a lot of 
conspiracies behind his death. Now, what's insane is that on top of these few that I've mentioned, there were even more crypto kings that also passed away in 2022. So everybody has been side-eyeing this community and the danger is potentially associated to anybody working in the digital money space. Y'all go ahead and check this out. This Russian billionaire is one of three crypto bosses to have died in unexpected circumstances in recent weeks. There's been loads of speculation, but here are the facts. Boy Chesov Turan died after his helicopter crashed in good weather last week. It's reported that the helicopter was being flown by an experienced pilot that also died. But there's been speculation that another passenger was meant to board the plane, but cancelled at the last minute. These details have not been confirmed. The authorities investigating say they don't know any more about the crash, but they aren't ruling out any third party involvement. This follows from the death last week of this crypto businessman. A statement from his company said that he died unexpectedly in his sleep. And his death followed this crypto millionaire who was found washed up on a beach last month. Before he died, he made a load of posts saying that he was scared for his life, and that's fueled a lot more speculation. But his family don't think his death is suspicious. They said he had a history of mental health problems. Now, what's insane is that basically his death caused a lot of conspiracy theories, but he was a very troubled young millionaire and he had a history of mental health problems. Now, his family is saying that they don't believe that there is any foul play, but some of his associates have bought the idea that his death was very, very suspicious and that they believe that the family was paid off to say that they don't suspect any foul play. So we'll never really know what happened to Nikolai, but his death was definitely one of the weirdest. So now we fast forward to 2023. And as of April 5th, we have the death of Bob Lee. Now, what's crazy about the death of Bob Lee and so many crypto kings is that we can all now say goodbye to Zelle, PayPal, Venmo, and all payment processing apps on our phone. Get ready for FedNow, which is expected to launch on July 1st. FedNow is a new payment processor designed to transfer 365 days a year, seven days a week check out their commercial. They dropped this commercial two years ago, and now this is getting ready to launch July 1st. In today's fast-paced world, time is money. More people, businesses, and organizations are demanding instant payments. That's why the Federal Reserve is developing the FedNow service, a safe and efficient instant payments infrastructure that will modernize the U.S. payment system. The FedNow service will give financial institutions the opportunity to innovate, enabling their customers to send and receive money in seconds, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. Funds will settle between financial institutions in real time, which means there's no buildup of interbank obligations, and end users will have access to the funds in seconds. How will the FedNow service work? Imagine the owner of a coffee shop is running low on coffee beans and needs to schedule a quick delivery. She places an order and the coffee bean company sends her a request for payment. She responds to the request for payment and pays for the coffee beans right then and there through an app from her credit union which uses the FedNow service. Once she initiates the payment, her credit union screens the payment and sends an ISO 20022 compliant payment message either directly or through a service provider to the FedNow service over the Federal Reserve's FedLine network. The FedNow service instantly validates the payment message and passes it along to the Coffee Bean Supplier's Bank. In real time, the Supplier's Bank confirms to the FedNow service that it intends to accept the payment, and the FedNow service debits and credits the master accounts of both the shop owners and the Coffee Bean Supplier's financial institutions or the master accounts of their correspondents. The FedNow service also immediately sends a payment message with an advice of credit to the supplier's bank and notifies the shop owner's credit union that settlement is complete. Finally, the supplier's bank credits the supplier's account in near real time, making the funds available. The supplier's bank will have the option of sending a confirmation to the shop owner's credit union that the payment has been posted to the supplier's account, providing the coffee shop owner with certainty that the payment was received. 
the- All right, so you guys just watched that commercial. And one of the things that FedNow is toting is faster transactions. They're saying that FedNow allows near instantaneous transactions, making it easier and more convenient for individuals and businesses to merge their finances. They're also saying that there's increased accessibility with 24-7 availability. FedNow ensures that you can now access funds and make transactions anywhere and anytime. They're also toting improved security. The Federal Reserve has implemented various security measures to protect against fraud and ensure the integrity of the payment system. The fourth benefit is enhanced competition. The introduction of FedNow has the potential to drive innovation in the payment industry, encouraging financial institutions to develop a new and improved service for their customers, okay? So all of this sounds really great, but there's a catch, and that's what we need to understand, that there's always the fine print. While this is coming in the guise of quick and convenient service, there's also a downside. Fed now is now going to be the central hub in which all money transactions pass through. For example, if you make a purchase from Instacart, Amazon, or Walmart, that transaction will go from your bank through FedNow and then to the retailer. So this means that the federal government will have complete access to your bank account. And on top of that, the fine print reveals that FedNow is programmable. And to clarify, that means consider this scenario. During a pandemic, only essential workers are allowed to work. If you are not classified as an essential worker, your FedNow card can be disabled, preventing you from getting gas and using your card elsewhere. Now, if you guys remember, this happened to the truckers when the truckers were protesting in Canada, Justin Trudeau. He basically had all of the banks in Canada freeze their account. So that way they couldn't get any donations. They couldn't get money to pay for gas. And eventually they would have to leave the convoy because, you know, there was no way for them to access money in their bank account. So this has the potential to go down here at any point in time as well. Another example, let's say you want to buy ammunition for your gun, but your car gets declined at the store because the federal government doesn't want you to purchase ammo. With FedNow, the government will have the power to control and access your bank account, turning it on and off as they see fit. When you receive an update to your phone about FedNow, Make sure to carefully read the details before accepting. It's going to be rolling out July 1st. All major banking systems will have this feature. This is essentially going to introduce us to the new central bank digital currencies, aka the CBDC, which I've been talking about for years. So definitely stay on top of all of this news that's breaking. Stay informed. We are living in some very, very interesting times. The dollar is dying. You have the BRIC nations falling back. They do not want to fool with the dollar. You have Saudi Arabia and Japan chiming in as well, backing up from the dollar. So it's a lot going on right now. And if you are not financially astute and don't know what's going on, I suggest you start reading and researching. We have meetings once a week on Zoom where we talk about all of this. So if you're new to the Discord, make sure you join our Zoom meetings. We have really good discussions. So on that note, let me know what you guys think about all of this craziness. Is there a curse on the crypto slash digital currency kings? Or is this just a series of unfortunate events? Let me know down in the comments below. Make sure you hit this video with a thumbs up and feel free to share it. And of course, make sure you still subscribe to the channel because YouTube loves to unsubscribe people and hit that notification bell so that way you never miss any future videos. You guys enjoy the rest of your day. I'll talk to y'all later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity, so sell your friends and your family. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.